that way. Um, I don't speak any Finnish, unfortunately, but probably after this talk, I promise myself that I, I, I need to learn more. Um, my name is Jeremiah. I'm going to talk to you today about a bit about designing an occupation. It started about four months ago. I was invited to, uh, to give an interview for a book. Um, it was a series of different questions, and one of the last ones was, what's the best idea you haven't realized yet? And I said, I, I'd love to design an occupation, how it behaves, how it works, how people feel. Um, the, that became an invitation to talk to you guys today. I remember I got the phone call, and I said, yes, yes, I'd love to speak. I hung up, and I thought, uh oh I'm, I haven't done much with this topic yet. Um, so what I've been thinking about uh, and what I'm going to talk about today is an approach. I'm going to raise some questions. I, I spoke with a lot of people, and I make some conclusions, but it's really a starting point to the, to the topic. Um, one of the first things I looked at was when we're young, especially living in North America and being grown up in North America, you often ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you go through all sorts of different things. Um, I come from St. Catharines. It's a very, very small town on the border of the U.S., very close to Niagara Falls. It's known for a lot of things, but it was kind of made 40 years ago on a General Motors uh, plant. Uh, it was the dream job at that time. Everyone dreamed to work for General Motors. It had a high security, um, very high uh, paid job. Um, it's no longer the dream job. The, the plants are closing. People don't know what to do for work, so it's kind of a sad case that you can find in many other parts of the world. When I was growing up, I wanted to become an inventor, an inventor of things. I later became a, a cyclist for a while. And when you e reach the age of around 19 or 20, you really start to think, okay, what am I doing and how, how am I going to make income? So I, I thought about being a plumber. And, you know, I looked around. There was a lot of houses in St. Catharines. And I thought, okay, I need to make some sort of income. And I was good with my hands, so I thought, okay, I'm going I'm to do some plumbing. I went to my guidance counselor at high school, and then she said to me, uh, you know, she started laughing, and I felt horrible. And then after that meeting, I went home, and I started asking other people, how do I become a plumber? And they laughed at me, too. So I felt really bad, but I did it anyway. I, I, was a, I worked as a plumber for a while in, in, in different locations, but especially within, within the city of St. Catharines. And I chose myself that I, I felt it wasn't my job. It wasn't what I wanted to do. So I, I fell upon the design profession by chance uh, more than 12 years ago. And... When you work in the design profession, it's, it's kind of a luxury. You talk to people that, oh, I'm a designer, and people say, oh, oh, that's really interesting. And it is. It's a nice job. I like it. But you also are faced with a lot of crap. So it's really debatable sometime who deals with more crap, the plumber or the designer. It's really, we can talk about it after the discussion. I think it's a heavy topic. Um, the other thing that, uh, you know, you go to parties and stuff, and you often get the question, what, what do you do for a living? And it defines who we are. Uh, what we look like, a status symbol, all those kind of heavy topics. Um, so I, I was really interested in what we do and how we feel about doing it. Um, you know, do you work to achieve a lifestyle or is work a lifestyle? And these are perfectly okay. It just depends on what phase of your life you decide to put effort into certain things. Um, you know, what do you get out of work and, and what do you give up as a result of putting in a certain amount of effort? And, and how do we evolve ourselves over time? So, you know, when our health changes, when the economy changes, when our job changes, what do we do? Uh, I find this fascinating. Um, so I started looking into uh, some profession, new professions, like bicycle couriers, for example. I worked as a bicycle courier for a short period of time in, in Holland. And I'm really interested in new professions that are rooted within old professions. So I, I looked at one of my childhood heroes, which is Fausto Coppi. Here he is in, in 1950-something. And he, was, he had a lot of pride and, and, and passion in, in, in what, what he was doing. And if you look at bicycle courts, and you'll see them in Helsinki, in, 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 in London, in New York, they have a lot of pride. Borderline cockiness to a certain extent, but amazing amount of energy in, in how they ride their bike, you know, choose not to wear a helmet, no brakes, it's, it's fantastic. Also how they dress to a certain extent. So this is Fausto, um, still looking very much like a, like a gentleman. And this is a picture of, of a courier. It can be any courier. But they often mix up uh, sports clothing with everyday, uh, everyday clothing. So they have a very unique style. So I, you know, it really says something about how they are designing their own profession on their own. The same with the community aspect. So here's Fausto with his brother training in, in, the, in Italy. And, and you know, at that time, there was really a brotherhood. There was an understanding. Of, it, it was competition, yeah, but it was also a way of behaving within the job. And in the career profession, it's fundamentally about that. I mean, that's what you get out of it. It's not, you don't pay a lot of, you don't get paid a lot of money. 
But one guy said to me, he said, nothing beats getting paid to ride your bike, right? So it's almost like getting paid is an after effect of doing the job, which is fantastic. So passion and profession, I think, is really, really interesting as, as, a, as a topic of how to design an occupation. And then I began talking with a lot of people. Um, you know, how people end up doing what they do, what else would they like to do? Um, then I asked about 100 people that I, some of them I knew, some of them I didn't know so well. But I asked them three questions. Uh, it started with, what did you want to do when you were young? What do you do now in your current job? And in the future, you know, what do you dream of doing? And it's not really work, it's kind of what do you see yourself doing in 40 years, whatever. Um, and here's a bunch of examples. So Sophie, she talked about when she was young, she did a lot of different things, and she, but mainly she was talking about this oof sensation that she gets when jumping off a dune with her brother and sister, which is nice. And currently, uh, she calls herself an editorial designer. And in the future, she says, you know, she doesn't have any words to describe it, only an image by Sotsas, which is a beautiful way of, of talking about her dream sort of project. Bellu wanted to become a policeman, ninja, and a drummer in a rock band. He's currently a music producer, composer, and, and a DJ. And, you know, in the future, he said, you know, it might sound corny, but I'm living my dream job. So it's a nice way of looking at it. Same thing with Jesse. You know, she wanted to be a gymnast and, or a gymnastics coach. And currently, um, she likes to make stuff and play stuff in terms of music. In the future, she just wants to make whatever she wants. So she's the kind of creative person that wants to do different things. Ilka uh, wanted to be become a sailor, but he knows now that that's not a job. <laughs> currently, he calls himself a designer. He, he, he says he creates, right? He constructs. Um, he says he's close to his, his, his dream job, um, but he wishes he could help more people with, with what he does. Laurence was, you know, wanted to be a carpenter, still is working as a carpenter, but in a design sense now, he's realizing a lot of spatial projects, and in the future, he wants to be more international. Eva wanted to take care of the monkeys in the zoo, especially the gorillas. <laughs> and she's currently a graphic designer in the future, right? She, she, her dream job was to do the same, um, only to have more freedom in, in a project. So these are just a couple examples. So you start to notice a lot of things, and some people sent photos, some people just sent text, some people said really long stories, which is, which is incredible. Um, you start to notice people talk about what the job is for them personally. And you also, you also notice some things visually, and not only in terms of their tools or what they, what they wear, but also how they project themselves visually working into that, in, in, in that field. I was talking to my wife about plumbing, <laughs> And why is it that people laugh when you say, I want to become a plumber? Because naturally, if you do a, a, an internet search for a plumber, you get a lot of visuals associated with, you know, guys working on the pipes. And, and I, she said, another friend of her said that, oh, I think of sex symbol. I thought, okay. So it's really interesting how you can visually change the profession pretty quickly. Um, and social. So how does, that, how does that profession relate with society, community, people you work with, and people you don't? Um, so personal, I'll just open this up. Federico described personally, when he was young, he felt that the world was so big and wide that he couldn't figure out what to do, right? That's, a, that's an idea. And Neva, she wanted to be a classroom music teacher. She's currently a music teacher. Um, but personally, right, she wants to play music for an appreciative audience. It was another way of taking it to a personal level. Uh, Elena wanted to become a coffee maker. She's currently a designer, but she does quite many things. So in the future, personally, she was saying that she would like to concentrate on one or two things. So it's a way of, of designing her own uh, development. And Bert described that, you know, he enjoys what he's doing, working with his hands. So personally, he's very comfortable with his body as his profession, in one way or another. And visual. So Ilona dreamed of becoming a Kekkonen princess, as she said. <laughs> She's the CEO of her own company, right? Um, and she wants to continue this path as a, a visualizing herself as a leader, um, but work in, di in different ways. Frank wanted to become a crane operator. He visualized the tools. Um, he now designs buildings and their sites, visualized by, you know, architect studio, wearing black, of course. Um, and in the future, you know, more time to delve into the essence of, of what an architect does. Uh, Erwan wanted to be a chef when he was young. He's currently working as a chef. And if you look at the chef in terms of culturally, what they wear as a uniform, their tools, their techniques, the, the type of products that they work with, and the final result, it's all visual. It's heavily. Um, Sanna enjoyed playing dress up and Um She's now a, a fashion editor at a magazine, and in the future, she wants to work at, in a fashion uh, 
fashion house, so visualizing for the company. And social, so Eamon and Rick didn't know each other when they were young. Rick, wa Eamon wanted to be an astronaut, Rick wanted to be a captain of the football team. Now they work together as graphic designers on a social basis. Uh, Yenna wanted to be an artist, a musician in, pop, uh, in particular. She works in the media, design, art, writing, curating, um, dreaming of never being bored and never being boring. So socially, she's created a new business, uh, linking designers uh, in, in a way. Heli uh, enjoyed drawing, but didn't have any thoughts about jobs. She's an art director and a photographer agent, so she's socially working in between. And she really likes what she, uh, what she does, and she wants to be a photographer someday. So somehow, her social relationships enable her to be something different than what she currently is. So in conclusion, Design and occupation, this is a starting point, right? It's, a, it's, it's an idea. And, and for me, you know, passion and profession is the absolute, um, if you would want to call it, design driver. Um, when I was a plumber, I remember that I worked for a couple months for an old Italian guy that would talk about the craft. And Italians are very appreciative of, of the quality and things. Um, and in Italy, a plumber is called a tubista, who works with, with tubes. And you know, we show up at some jobs where you'd have a plumber working on, on this sort of uh, work, and this is totally horrible. Um, you can tell that that plumber didn't have any pride or passion in their, in their profession at all. So the old Italian guy was talking to me about motors, the way motors are, are fused together and they work as an ecosystem. So designing a, a, a motor system, which is a very nice idea. Um, and of all the people I was, I, I was talking to, the interesting thing, you, know, you asked those three questions and most of them responded, uh, thank you for asking me those questions. I really enjoyed thinking about it and answering your, your questionnaire. So it was probably one of the more popular questionnaires I've ever sent out. Um, so I would like, to, you know, we got 600 people in the audience from various backgrounds. I find this audience to be fascinating in, in, in many ways. So I would ask you the same questions, you know, what did you want to do? What are you doing now? And what do you dream of doing in the future? And I would really like to talk to you about it. So thank you very much.